Hi everyone, I'm Sam. Welcome to my channel. I'm an artist and I'm really passionate about helping others to grow in skills and confidence and also grow an art business that makes them serious money. You don't have to be a starving artist. I'm here to bust that outdated myth. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to grow on Instagram in a healthy way. Might be a little bit controversial compared to what you might hear out there, but I think it's really important to stay OK in your mindset when you're growing on social media because it can become overwhelming and it can be really disheartening. So I've got my cup of tea. I've got my notes. Let's get started. So the first tip that I say about growing on Instagram is that although it's important to be consistent and you probably hear this a lot, I think consistency does not mean constantly. And I think it's much more important to set a realistic goal that you can keep up with. So instead of posting every day or twice a day, post twice a week and feel OK with that and keep a good mindset than really burning out feeling disheartened, running out of steam, and then disappearing for kind of weeks on end, which I see happening to a lot of creatives. I think we're highly sensitive, most of us, and I think, you know, you go at things at 100 miles an hour, you kind of hit a sprint, you think, oh, you know, the best thing to do, you see it everywhere, is that you need to post at least every day, all the time, post what you're doing constantly, but that's an awful lot of pressure to keep up. You might be able to do it for a little while, but it's not sustainable. So set yourself a realistic goal based on your lifestyle, and it's better to feel okay and feel level than burning out. You can be clever with this, you know, you can batch your content, Make sure that you stop and film a little bit of your of your piece while you're working on it. And so that you've got a little bank of things that you can then post at a later date. Keep them in your phone or keep them on a hard drive. And you know that you've got things that you can post twice a week. And you can also store them in drafts, um, same with reels as well. So you can be clever about it. And you don't have to burn yourself out. The next tip I would say is to take notice of trends and new features. When Instagram introduces a new feature, they're really going to be pushing that. So over the last year or so, Reels have been really great. And although it took me a while to catch on to that, it really made a difference to my growth. I was stagnating at around 15,000 followers, which is a good number, but it just didn't seem to be growing. I ended up gaining followers and then losing them the same day and it kind of stayed in the same level. And then when I started doing reels, it shot up and I'm now at kind of 30,000. So I've doubled in the last six months and that's mainly due to reels. And it's just the fact that I have followed a trend, they're working, so why wouldn't you do it? It's a lot more work, but if that's what works, that's really important. Instagram seems to be now going back to photos uh, or changing things up a little bit. So it's just important to keep an eye on things. If you're creating a reel, keep an eye on trending sounds. You can see that because it's got that little arrow that goes up so that you know that this is trending. Maybe little challenges that are happening. One that really springs to mind is Inktober or Vlogmas, you know, every day of the year in December. You just have to commit to that in December, but you know there's an end point, which is good. Days of the year like International Wildlife Day or Women's Day that's coming up tomorrow. Things like that, you know, keep an eye on trends and keep an eye on things that are really working for other people and just have fun with it and go with it and just see where it takes you. The next tip I would say is to post good quality content. So that generally means lighting and sound. You can edit on your phone now. It's really straightforward. If you record everything on your phone, you don't need a fancy pants camera. Everything can be done on the great iPhones now and obviously some others too. And you can edit the videos and lighten them up. So you can go into the editing software. There's a little button that actually enhances your photo or your video. So if you want to leave it at that, actually that makes it a lot better. It helps to record where the lighting's good. So daylight is always going to be beneficial to getting a really good quality video or photo. And another tip I would say for editing your photos is that if you're drawing or if you're an artist 
and you take a photo and because the cameras are so good nowadays they tend to pick up on every little thing that actually your naked eye wouldn't see and it makes your drawing or your painting look quite different to how you have it in real life so there's something called noise reduction in your editing software and if you just turn that up a little bit it just softens the look so it looks much more like your original piece than it does with the editing software. So I've, I use that quite a lot. My next tip would be to answer messages as much as you can. Obviously, if you're getting lots of messages throughout the day, you don't want to spend the whole time on social media and it can be a little bit overwhelming and you just might not have enough hours in the day. But if you've got a small audience and you're starting to get people commenting on your content, then I think it's just really nice to say thank you at least and answer as many messages as you can. You're trying to build relationships with these people as well. This is social media and it's important to recognise that these are real people that are writing you lovely comments. They're taking time out of their precious day to write a comment saying how wonderful they think your work is or maybe ask you a question about your equipment. So I think if you have the mindset that you're going to answer and be as friendly and approachable as can be, then I always think that's better to build really healthy, good relationships with the people that are following you. My next tip would be to use different features like stories, reels, uh, photos, mix it up, use the stickers that are available in stories. They're really quite fun. They keep things interesting. You can create polls for your followers. You can ask questions. You can put music. You can put little funny emojis or things that really enhance your drawing or your post, whatever it is that you're posting. I just think it's really fun to keep it interesting. Those little sliders are good as well. People tend to like those. So try and use as many of the features and keep it interesting. If you're posting photos, which I think Instagram is going a little bit back towards, then you don't have to just post one. You could post a carousel of photos or maybe even have a little video in at the end just to keep things interesting. And my last point would be to keep in mind that social media is part of your job as an artist. If you want to make this a successful career, then it's really important that you understand that it's not just an annoyance or something that you don't like doing. It's part of your job. And we're really lucky that we can reach worldwide now with our social media. Use it as an advantage. Don't spend your precious headspace worrying about the algorithm and really getting frustrated about the fact that this post hasn't got as many likes as the last one. That is a slippery slope and it will really take you downhill to a place of frustration and burnout really quickly. And from someone who has grown their following quite steadily and slowly. I have had a few reels and photos that have gone viral, viral for me. Viral just means more views or engagement than your followers. That's viral, it doesn't have to be the millions. I think we just see numbers now as if it's not hundreds of thousands and it doesn't count. It's all about mindset and all about keeping a positive mindset. So for someone that has gone viral, I've got to say that that excitement that you think that you're going to get from it is fleeting. Yes, it does happen. But then what happens is the next post doesn't get as much and you feel downhearted. So it's really important to try and stay level and not be too caught up on the numbers of likes. It doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. It could be just that that post didn't get pushed out. Um, maybe you got your timings wrong. Have a look at your analytics and see when your followers are actually on Instagram. And that will really help you to post at the right time but don't get too caught up in the numbers. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that your art's bad. It doesn't mean that you will never grow. It doesn't mean that you won't have a viral video or post if that's what you're looking for. Just know that when you do get those viral posts and videos, it's fleeting. You know, you're constantly looking for the next one. You're only as good as the last one. So I think it's important to stay level regardless of whether it's good or bad. Don't spend your time worrying about the algorithm and almost using it as an excuse not to post. Be consistent, show up as you, be authentic and try and keep that positive mindset that you're just kind of plodding away and it's part of your job. It's just part of your work. And actually there are pros and cons to everything. So if we can look at the positive side of things and not focus too much on the negative, then I think that's really important for you to stay consistent and build the business that you love, doing what you love every single day. So I really hope you found those tips helpful. 
I'm really passionate about people growing a healthy mindset around your work, having a business that you love, not one that feels like a slog and earning really good money from it too. Because as an artist, you don't need to struggle. We can re be really successful and do what we love every day too. It's all about creating the life that you love. So if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. To see more, I'm gonna be bringing out art business videos every Friday. And then on Tuesdays, I'm gonna be bringing out art tip videos, tutorials and workshops to help you grow your skills and confidence as an artist too. So lots of love, and I really look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.